And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Acanthopholis, which was a request from Millie via YouTube, so thanks. The name means spiny scales, and it's an ankylosaur in the family Notosauridae that lived in the Cretaceous in what is now England. John Griffiths, a fossil collector, found the bones in 1865 at the shoreline near Kent, and he sold them to Dr. John Percy, a metallurgist. Percy let Thomas Huxley know about the bones, and then Huxley paid Griffiths to dig up the fossils at the site, and he found more bones and some body armor parts. Huxley named Acanthopholis horridus in 1867, and the species name means frightening or rough. Hmm. In 1890, Arthur Smith Woodward renamed the species name to Acanthopholis horrida because pholus is feminine. The type specimen consists of three teeth, a basic cranium, dorsal vertebra, spikes, and scutes. It has a long, confusing history, which shouldn't be surprising <laughs> because it was found in the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. In 1869, Harry Govier Seely named three new Acanthopholis species, Macrocercus, Platypus, and Stereocercus. Platypus? Yes. <laughs> then he split off material of Acanthopholis stereocircus and named a new Anaplosaurus species based on part of that, Anaplosaurus major. And he described another species, Acanthopholis eucircus, based on six caudal vertebrae. But then in 1902, Franz Nopska reassigned that Acanthopholis major and renamed Anaplosaurus curtinotus to Acanthopholis curtinotus. In 1879, Seeley also named Siganosaurus based on part of material from Acanthopholis macrocircus. It's a mouthful. In 1956, Frederick von Huhn renamed Acanthopholis platypus to Macrosaurus platypus, but not everybody <laughs> agrees with this. They're fine with the platypus part, but not the. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That's great. <laughs> Then in 1999, Xavier Pereda Superbiola and Paul Barrett reviewed all Acanthopholis material and found all species were nomina dubia. The specimens were composites of ankylosaur and ornithopod remains. Oh, no. All that work. Although, in that case, Acanthopholis platypus makes sense. But anyway, <laughs> Acanthopholis platypus, as an example, had sauropod metatarsals. Huh. <laughs> Seeley also had two unpublished names that he used to label museum specimens, Acanthopholis husi and Acanthopholis keeping eye. Something like he's keeping it. But anyway, these are nomina nuda, which means naked name. Originally, Huxley had assigned Acanthopholis to Solidosauridae, and then in 1902, Nopska created the family Acanthopholididae and later named the subfamily Acanthopholinae. And it was changed to Acanthopholidae in 1928. Now it's considered to be Notosauridae in Ankylosauria, if it's considered to be anything at all, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, descriptions of Acanthopholis say that it had thick armor made of oval keeled plates that were horizontal on the skin and long spikes on the neck and shoulder along the spine. And it was quadrupedal and orbivorous. Sounds like a notosaur. Yeah. <laughs> and it was estimated to be between 10 and 18 feet or three and five and a half meters long and weighing 840 pounds or 380 kilograms. Though that's not known for sure since it's based on fragments and it's considered by some to be nomina dubia. Yeah. It seems on the light side, only 840 pounds for a 10 to 18 foot long ankylosaur. I don't know. Maybe made up of all those other parts of dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> made it lighter. 